And with us right now for our third, thank you, Amanda, by the way, for, for doing this. Three amazing sessions. If you haven't heard number one and number two, stop this episode, go back and listen to my first conversation with Amanda because we lay down some groundwork in terms of weight loss and healthy living for busy parents. In, in, and we talked a lot about psychology and accountability and why that works and, and, and how to achieve these things for yourself. Uh, in episode number two, we talked about eating for busy parents uh, and you know what are some of the things that you could do that are really going to help give you more vibrance in life, more energy. Uh, and you know, we talked about calorie in, calorie out. We talked about you know, eat less, move more. We we busted a lot of myths. We talked about intermittent fasting. We talked about a uh, lot of lot of really great. Uh, Amanda, we talked about um, you know uh, an anti-inflammatory approach to eating and and why that can really help with a lot of things. Uh, but in this third uh, and final episode, is the last one. So, by the way, if you love, if you've loved this conversation with Amanda and you have not yet joined Amanda's community, it's hopping over there. And you can have 30 days for free. It's savingsangel.com slash 2020. Uh, it's free. Uh, and if you'd like to stay beyond the 30 days and it's just $10 a month and the most important, like you're going to get education, you're going to get support, you're going to get community, you're going to get accountability. Uh, and there's no, I don't make any money on that. I just, I love the work that Amanda does. Amanda is a friend of mine. We've been friends for many years. Uh, and Amanda helped me uh, over the past, in the first 43 days of me saying, all right, Amanda, tell me what to eat and I'll eat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I was able to shed three and a quarter inches off my waist in 43 days. And I should say, Amanda, that I did this through a one week vacation, through Thanksgiving, right. through Christmas. Right. Like I had all sorts of temptations all around me uh, but I just said, you know what, I'm just going to, all I need is someone to just tell me what to do and I will do it. And then, you know, we had some accountability set up in there and it absolutely worked for me. So before we get going into exercise, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, cause uh, it oh really, my gosh. I'm, I'm getting emotional because it's just, it's so frustrating to live normal life but look in the mirror or put on those pair of pants and or shirt. And I'm like, I don't like the way this feels. I don't like yeah. the way that I'm presenting myself. I don't have all of the health and vitality that I really deserve. I'm doing things. I'm like crashing all the time in the afternoon. I'm not sleeping as well. Like all of those things for me have improved since um since we started working together so again i don't mean to oh well, yeah oh my know, gosh I, i'll be just no, be very just authentic if you're watching the video why you i know. do what i do well yeah 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 <laughs> you know we call it weight loss you know especially january brand new year weight yes. loss is the goal but the reality is is that our daily experience of living is our goal and we want that to be as enjoyable and pur purposeful and impactful as possible you know, Amanda, you dropped a bombshell in our second conversation when I asked about when it comes to losing weight, what percentage do you think it's related to diet or the food we eat and what percentage is exercise? And you said that it's about 98.9% .9 what we eat. You can't out exercise a bad diet, I think is the, is the common saying. And I can tell you, it's absolutely true in my yeah. experience uh, and this is kind of the, the, the numbers I give myself because sometimes, and here's, here's what I see myself doing, and I know a lot of other people do this as well, is, and I just saw this in a TV show. I've been watching Encore on Disney Plus, by the way. I don't know if you've uh -huh. seen this, but if you like <laughs> theater in any way, oh, it's just such a wonderful show. Uh, my, my wife got me hooked into it. So it's Kristen Bell is the producer. And so she has... Um, these people do like a high school musical and then like 10, 20 years later, they go back and they redo it as now adults. So you have a lot of this reunion type stuff and it's, it's so great. Anyway, I, I bring that up. Uh, there was one scene where a couple of ladies uh, walk on a treadmill 
And I've been uh-huh. so guilty of this, right? And so uh-huh. I go, I, they walk on a treadmill for 30 minutes while they're talking. Uh, and then they say, oh, that's great. Now let's get, go, go get cookies. <laughs> you yes. know, again, I think they were yes. being humorous about it. Yes. But come on, like yeah. everybody does this. You, uh, here's what I know, right? You, if you burn, let's say, let's say the, let's say that the calorie estimate was even accurate, right? Which we yeah. all know, like I can tell you, like I've got a fitness bike and the built-in yeah. computer, oh, I, come on. It's like That's so right. off the numbers, yeah. like in terms of like how many calories I actually burned. Burn. Uh, right. Even if that were accurate, in my experience, you don't get anywhere near 100%. Like you can't burn 200 calories and then eat 200 calories worth of sugary cookies and have it be like a net zero. No No way. No, that's not how the body works. (laughs) So tell us how the body works and then we'll get into exercise. Okay. Well, I mean, with regards to that specifically, there is, there's so much that goes into keeping the body in, um, in survival and comfort zone in yeah. homeostasis, you know, so there are different ways to look at your metabolism, like how, you know, how much energy is required for you to stay just like you are versus how much energy do you need to run a marathon versus how much energy do you need to lose some weight? And so there's all these different levels of looking at what's going in versus what's coming out. And, um, you know, <laughs> the, the energy required to, to eat something is less than the energy required to work out. So if you worked out and you burn, and this is just totally general surface level speak right now, but if you worked out and you burn 200 calories, it's probably, you know, even if 200 is the max number, like that took a lot of effort, you sweat, other parts of your body were working, there was a lot of heat generated, there was all kinds of stuff going on. Well, then you and your girlfriend walk down to the corner cafe, have a seat and take a bite out of a cookie. Like, First of all, it's not going to take very many cookies to get to that 200. And second of all, you're not even, there's no residual effort. So that's just one way of me explaining like those, that's the the whole calories in calories out thing doesn't even make sense when we really stop and use our common sense. And there's a lot of science behind that, but that's one of the ways that I explain it is you got to think about the level of effort and intention going into an activity and then recognize that there's a little bit of a double standard there. (laughs) So there's, there's a couple of ways I want to talk about this next part. And the first yeah. part, you know, just in terms of exercise and why we should exercise, but I want to start by talking about if your goal is to lose weight and A, you don't eat healthy currently, or you know that it's not optimal, and B, you haven't exercised at all, um, I should, pro- my thinking would be like, whoa, 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 don't stress about beating yourself up at the gym just yet. Like that's not a phase one thing you need to really focus on. Maybe your goal for the first 30 days would be like, you know, go ahead and walk your doggy around the block a couple times every day or something like that. Just like, and that's, that's good. Like that's, we're just, we want to set up habits, but um, and we'll, we'll get it first. Let's talk about that uh, just in terms of like getting started. Yeah. So I think you, you're hundred percent right. You need to start where you are with what you have, not where you want to be. Um, mm-hmm. I talk a lot about the gaps versus the gain mentality in the group coaching program. And, you know, we all have somewhere we want to be right. Whether it's a magazine picture or how we used to look in high school or whatever, there's, there's kind of this vision in our head of where we're headed, what losing 30 pounds looks like, et cetera. And a lot of times without appropriate coaching, accountability, support influences, we get fixated on that thing. And all we see when we go look in the mirror every day is that we're not there. And so all we see is the gap and that gets pretty daunting after a while. And that's one of the reasons people give up so quickly, you know, over 90, 90% of people give up on their new year's resolutions by February. So that's one of the reasons is we just get tired of feeling defeated all the time. We're humans. We're not just doers, not just eaters, not just movers. Um, And, you know, the, the other piece of that is I have to train myself to get where I want to be. And that's where these small, start small, start simple, consistent actions create habits over time. And not to boil us down to a psychological experiment, but we are creatures of habituation. Like 
we do what we do every day because we built a skill set out of it. We know we get up, we walk to the coffee pot, we go, da, 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 you know, we do the things. And all, all you want to do is apply that principle to what you want in life. And then you'll get what you want in life. You know, if you want to lose weight, you have to slowly train your body, your mind, your metabolism, how to get there. And over time you get there. You know, our, our uh, neighborhood has a community center. And as of when we're recording this right now, it's the first week in January. I know if I pop in there right now, it's going to be a madhouse. Yes. And, you know, because people, when you go to the fitness center or you, you know, start a, you know, a hardcore, you know, you bought a Peloton, which by the way, mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about in a little bonus session, I'm going to talk about how I was able to get a Peloton experience for about 25 and I love the experience for about 25% of the, uh, of the cost. Um, so if you're interested in that, hang tight, I'm going to get that to you. Yeah. Um, but you know, people like the idea of working out on January 1st to hit their new year's resolution goals because they feel like they're doing something right. Mm-hmm. And so, but the problem is like, you will probably experience some results in week one. This is, I'll speak for myself. You experience some results in week one because you're all like eating healthy and stuff. And you're like, whoa, oh my gosh, I dropped like two pounds this week. Um, And then week two hits and you're like, oh, I didn't lose two pounds this week like I did the first week. And then week three hits and you're like, well, I completely plateaued. Like this sucks. And then, sorry, that's not a good word. Just in case there's children listening, don't say that. Uh, <laughs> um, but it, it really stinks. And so, uh, and so the, that's, I think when, you know, for me, that's when I would throw in the towel. It's like when yeah. I plateaued for too long. And again, um, you know, exercise and, and not eating uh, with 100% accountability is uh, is just you're going to get those plateaus, and and you're you're going to have other things that are going to be like, oh, this is a little bit more work than I thought. Um, I guess what I'm getting to, Amanda, is yeah. this idea of proactively eating versus exercising. Eating mm-hmm. is something you have to be mindful of. I say 24 seven, but at least 16 yeah, hours much. a day, <laughs> right? As opposed to, right? well, if I'm exercising, I don't have to think about that 30 minutes of a day. Right, right. Well, I think the, the, the thing to really go in on here is if we are exercising to lose weight, at some point that is set up to fail. We, mm. we, you know, and if you are, if you're looking for healthy to be the way you feel, look and act, then working out has to be for another reason, you know? And so I try to develop in people the idea and, and the adherence to the idea that moving is how we were made. So we need to move on a daily basis. We don't necessarily need to go kill it in the gym every day, but you need to be giving your body what it was designed to do. We're cellular masses. I get really sciencey about things, but like we're not static. Like if you put a microscope on me at its highest level, like you'd see a bunch of little cells bumping into each other. Like we are moving. And so we have to parallel that and get into alignment with the way that we were created to live. And so movement, becomes the goal as opposed to uh, work out until you've burned 400 calories or spend an hour in the gym every day. Like those very rigid, um, externally motivated goals, they might get you started, but they're definitely not going to keep you going. And they're definitely going to peter out after a period of time, especially when you bring the other aspects of being human in, like needing rest or feeling discouraged or not having time or being busy, like all these things come to play. So if your goal is to move every day because it's good for you and it honors who you are, then you're going to be a lot more likely to not just benefit from working out, but, but reap all of the other benefits that come with it and then start to love it as much as it loves you. Um, you know, one of my favorite things to tell people about exercise is that it actually promotes the, um, the generation of BDNF, which is brain derived neurotrophic factor. It's a protein that is made in the prefrontal cortex of your brain and it helps you think better. It helps you make better choices. It helps you like log memories better. So a lot of times we talk about exercise in the group coaching program as a strategy for achieving wellness goals because working out 
will help you do the things that, that get you there. It's not just that that equals that. It's not that simple. You know, Amanda, I can speak for myself as well, um, is when I make that time for myself to exercise emotionally, like I have much better mental health. Um, I don't get into those weird funks where, you know, to me, it feels like, you know, minor depression from time Mm -hmm. to time or something sets me off and, and, uh, you know, I start ruminating over things. I feel like I'm able to just be much more resilient emotionally when, I'm giving my body, it has more of the, you know, the happy hormones in yeah. it. So I, I don't, I don't stay stuck in, in negative emotions as well, or I just generally yeah. feel happier. I feel yeah. more confident, uh, as a result, if I give my body, uh, the movement that it's craving. Yeah. So, so what you're really explaining there is a couple of things, but yes, <laughs> exercise is going to promote that happy, healthy neurotransmitter hormone balance in your brain. You're going to develop more serotonin and more dopamine and things like that, but you're also simultaneously going to be detoxing the stress hormones and mm. you know, the, the, the less happy feelings. And that is a, exercise is a form of catharsis and it's a very physical process. Um, and then simultaneously, third little tier here is you're teaching yourself how to manage stress in a way that you are choosing and in control of, you know, stuff happens every day, all day, and we have to deal with it. Well, exercise is kind of like going into training for stress management. It's saying, Hey, doing five pushups is hard, but if you do one more, you'll get better. So you put yourself in a stressful situation that you are in charge of. So the perceived level of stress in your mind is less, but you as a human are developing the ability to go harder, go longer, you know, put up with more, adapt around things, problem solve better, you know, think differently. It's an amazing mind, body, spirit, like transformation that happens when you get into this exercise habit. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really listen to my friend who's listening to our conversation right now. Um, I, listen, I know what it's like to, you know, have those that, that you know, whether it's, you know, those feelings of depression come in or, or you know, it's, I, I really don't like it. I don't, I don't, that's not what I want for myself. I want to be more resilient. I want to, um, live a happy and fulfilling life. And so if hopefully if our conversation between Amanda and I, and, and uh, you're in the room with us here, uh, if that can inspire you to uh, some movement that can help facilitate more joy uh, and resiliency in your life, uh, that is honestly, 2020 has been a successful year for me then. <laughs> um, but Amanda, I want to talk about the, the different types of exercise and what, uh, so we talk about like resistance training or strength training versus, mm-hmm. you know, cardio versus just general movement. And can mm-hmm. you kind of just give us a, a quick overview of the main benefits or why we might want to uh, lift weights, uh, for example, mm-hmm. or resistance training in a way? Uh, and, and also, if you want to dispel the myth that uh, a woman is going to get bulky if they lift weights, you're welcome to yeah. discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and then first and foremost, I have to say that I am a firm believer in, in balance when it comes to the different types of exercise, depending on what phase of life you're in and depending on what your goals are. It's definitely better to have a little bit of each thing versus just do one thing. Um, and then also the second thing I'll stress before diving into each one of those things is that, you know, starting where you are with what you have is bottom line, the best thing you can do for yourself. If you don't work out right now and you start taking a walk around the neighborhood every day, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. You know, it doesn't actually matter that you have this perfect routine and that you have the right balance of the right type of exercise at the right time. You know, it depends on where you are, but anything that you do now is going to be more than what you were doing. And that's an amazing gift to yourself. So that being said, yeah, um, I'm a runner. (laughs) <laughs> so right. a lot of people think that I'm like a cardio queen, but, um, but no, I think, like I said, I think it's important for each one, but, um, what it really boils down to is your fitness, your physical wellness is not made up of one component. So just like humans, it's not just one thing. So you are not just muscles. 
You are not just cardiovascular health. You are not just flexibility. You are all of these things. And so it's not going to benefit you very long just like we talked about calorie depletion before, it's not going to benefit you for very long to just do one type of exercise. There's going to come a point in time where if you are only lifting weights all the time, that a muscle snaps because its flexibility hasn't been taken care of, right? Or maybe your heart health goes down the toilet because you're not doing cardio. Like there is going to be a period of time where anything is good, but over the long haul, you want to develop some balance based on your Mm. goals and periods of time in life when you go all in on one area or the other are great. And I help people do that. Um, but in general, we want a little bit of everything and, and weightlifting and strength training, resistance training is really a great place to start because it's going to have the greatest impact. Um, your, your muscles need to be stressed and to be taxed because your muscles support your bones and they support your joints and they support your ligaments and muscles take up more energy. So then that brings in the metabolic component that is that 1.1% um, part of, of weight loss is, you know, you have to work harder to train your muscles. And so you're going to be putting in more energy, more effort, and there's going to be more output as well. Um, so, so strength training really benefits the entire body. Um, cardiovascular training just we'll call it steady state cardio, getting on the elliptical, getting on the Mm -hmm. treadmill, riding a bike in just a steady fashion. That's great movement. It's amazing for you. And it's also really good heart rate training to get yourself to like that middle zone where you're not unable to talk, but you're also definitely exercising. That middle zone is a great place to spend some time in because it's conditioning. It's teaching your body that it can go a little bit further than it wants to, and that life is still going to be okay. And you can achieve things in that, in that zone. Um, And then I I hit on flexibility because I think it's something that gets neglected a lot or it just gets chosen exclusively. You know, there are plenty of people who only do yoga and that's beautiful. There are usually very beautiful people, (laughs) (laughs) but, (laughs) but, you know, maybe they have a hard time carrying the boxes when they move their kid into college. Right. Right. Um, So we haven't developed holistic wellness when we only do one thing, but, but stretching and recovering and building strength from a standpoint of stability, which is often what something like flexibility training will give you the ability, you know, to hold a plank forever is it means you're strong from the inside out. Um, and so it, it taps into like tinier fast twitch muscle fibers that get stronger behind the larger muscles that we see. So each one of those components is definitely a part of balanced fitness. But, um, if I were going to tell somebody who was already moving a little bit, to dive into something that would benefit them the most, it would be weight training. And the whole women bulking up when they lift weights thing. Right. I have an interesting standpoint on that because I'm not going to tell you it's not going to (laughs) happen because it happens to me, but there are multiple different ways to train with weights that will either promote larger muscles or promote stronger muscles. You know, there's muscle endurance and there's muscle size and strength. So there's, there's different techniques to lifting that get you different results, um, that you can see physically, but, but the internal benefits are the same. Um, and, but that being said, it's also about body type in general and you getting aligned to what's best for your body. You know, I'm a mesomorph. My body responds quickly to resistance. Um, I have a more athletic build, you know, then there are ectomorphs and, and what's the other one? I'm, it's completely just flew out of my mind. But you know, you have people who look a certain way because of genetics and demographics and all these things. And so you you want to appeal to what your body is good at and and give it what it needs. And that's really more about alignment than it is about aesthetics. Yeah. So uh, is, I guess for someone who's like, well, what should I do? I mean, should I get a Peloton? Should I start running? Should I start lifting weights? I mean, should I get beach bodies, fan, another fantastic yeah. uh, program? I, it, how does someone decide? Yeah. Well, going back, start where you are with what you have, which, you know, if you have a budget in place to go after something to implement um, and, and there's something you feel inclined to do, go for it. If it is, you know, I'm really pumped that you're going to share this deal on this bike with everyone, because if that's something that interests you, go for it. That level of movement, you can do a lot with a bike. You can, you can pump up the resistance and get a little bit more push pull out of it than just steady state riding. So there's a lot of versatility there. Um, if, if you don't, but you have a pair of tennis shoes and you want to go out and start walk jogging your neighborhood, 
do that. Um, there's actually, you know, if, if budgeting is a thing, um, finances are limited, there's tons of free resources where you can start. Um, and I also, also offer some of that in my community. Um, but then something like, you know, you mentioned Beachbody On Demand and there's a couple others um, where there are like digital libraries of every type of fitness program you could want. And you, all you have to do is press play in your basement, in your living room, you know, push the kitchen table out of the way. And you've got access to the ability to do first, maybe body weight stuff, you know, body weight squats or resistance if you haven't been lifting weights. And then you get to a place where you can, you know, buy your first pair of five, 10, 15 pound dumbbells. Yeah. But I think someone should know that, um, listen, it's, uh, you, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars. You don't have no. to get a gym membership. Uh, no. it, and, and I would argue that it, it really, you know, save that for what I, what I do is I say, look, I'm kind of excited about that right now. It sounds right. fun. So here's what I'm, here's the deal I'm going to make with myself. If I can commit to running for 90 days uh, then, or whatever it is, right. That's that fits that I have within my means right now. Yeah. And I show that I'm committed to it. Then I can earn that. That's kind of the little trick that I've played with myself. Um, and th th I mean, that's, that's maybe that will help for somebody who I think you know, that's has something really, really expensive smart that they idea. want to buy. <laughs> That's a really smart idea um, because the reward there is something that's going to perpetuate the desire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Amanda, um, I, I want to share again, your, your group coaching and community and accountability uh, program that, that, uh, that you have, and someone can go to save, you can go to savingsangel.com slash 2020. And if you'll do that, then you can actually join Amanda's community totally free for 30 days. Check it out, watch the videos, download all the stuff. And if you like it, great. Stick around because it's only 10 bucks a month and you'll be part of a great family, a great community of support of people that will help you achieve your goals. I can, again, speak firsthand from following Amanda's program I just ate what she told me to eat. I just ate what she told me to eat. Uh, and I was able to drop three and a quarter inches off my weight. Now, interestingly, like I lost 10 pounds, which uh, is great. But I thought like I would have maybe lost more pounds than that. But I'll take that. I, listen, I'd much rather have the inches lost than you know, whatever the scale says. Uh, and that's, man, that's a conversation for another time. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I, I do want people to know, again, savingsangel.com slash 2020, get 30 days free uh, with Amanda's program. Uh, and Amanda Ward, thank you so much. This is a third of a three-part series. We covered a lot of ground. And uh, listen, we could, we could have this conversation every week for the entire year. Yeah. Uh, but we only have so many resources. And if you want that conversation with Amanda every week yeah. for the rest of the year, well, then again, you could just uh, uh, look into Amanda's program, savingsangel.com slash 2020. And Amanda's going to take good care of you, I promise. So Amanda, thank you so much uh, again for these three epic conversations. I feel like we've done a lot of good, my friend. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about what I love. Awesome.